Now I have got a fantastic video for you. A lot of videos you're gonna see are just gonna give you tips and recommendations, but they're not gonna test if you're actually able to do that. As we get a little bit up in age, maybe we don't have the range of motion, the flexibility that we once had. Let's put that to the test. Let's see what your range of motion is and then build a swing for you that's gonna fit that range of motion. Let's go and get started. I have got a ton of great videos coming out for you this year and I don't want you to miss out. Now the only way you're going to see my latest releases is if you click that subscribe button down below. Go ahead and click that right now. Hit the thumbs up button that really helps us out and post your comments. I would love to hear from you. All right, so piece number one, we have to rotate in the backswing. So we talk about in the top speed golf system, the power turn, which basically means that if I take a club, put it across my shoulders, I want to load up my hips and my shoulders and my body, get a good full shoulder turn in the backswing. And then the downswing, I want to go ahead and rotate all the way on around to a good full finish. That's great. Everybody would love to do that. We'd all love to look like Justin Thomas or Adam Scott, but can we physically do this with our body? And I got a great test for you and a cheat it's gonna make this easier if you fail the test. So let's put this club across our shoulders again. The club's gonna go on the tips of the shoulders here, kind of on the, the edges, and then put your fingertips across there and hold this club in place. I want the grip side of the club pointing out from my left shoulder. Now here, this will be rotating level with the ground. We're gonna go ahead and hinge down in our posture so that as we rotate, I want this club pointing you know, somewhere from the golf ball to a little bit outside the golf ball. I've put this orange stick on the ground to kind of give me a zone of where I want the tip of this club to be pointing if I do this correctly. Now what I want you to do is keep your, club, or keep your heel firmly planted against the ground. Don't lift that heel at all. And as you rotate to the top of your swing, go as far as you can with that heel still on the ground. Now to do this, if you can let that right leg straighten up a little bit, that's gonna to help to rotate the hips. And you wanna feel like your weight shifts a little bit to the right as that's happening. Go as far as you can go without lifting that heel off the ground. Now, if you're in, say, the first half of the stick, that would be kind of the, the okay zone, not the best, but I'd probably like to get a little bit more. If you're over here on this half of the stick or farther back, that's fantastic. You're doing, you're doing great. You don't have to do anything else. What that's telling me is that if I can keep my heel on the ground and get all the way back over here, then I can, I can really make a good power turn, a good full swing without having to make any adjustments. If I'm here and I'm short of the golf ball, absolutely 100%, you're gonna have to make some adjustments here. So if I'm in the middle or in the front back here, I wanna go ahead and lift that heel up to go a little farther. So repeat this drill again, again, hinge forward, don't lift that heel at all. And now from here, go as far as you can and then lift your left heel a little bit and you'll notice how you can get another 15, 20 degrees. So we're gonna test ourselves, see what zone we can get into. And ideally, I'd like for us to get, with lifting that heel, get somewhere back here in this zone, at least two feet behind this golf ball, if that's possible. Now for some players, that may need to be even more exaggerated. Maybe I need to lift the heel like Jack Nicholas or Johnny Miller to make that happen. Those guys are pretty good. That's a pretty good swing. They won some major championships with those swings. So nothing wrong with having to lift your heel that much. That's just gonna help you to work with your own range of motion. Now let's put this to the test. I got my flight scope out here. Let me try one without a heel lift and with heel lift. And let's see how much distance there is between those two swings. Okay, swing number one, we're gonna go heel down. It's gonna limit my shoulder turn a little bit. Let's see what kind of club head speed we get. Hey, not bad. Hit that one right down the left center of the fairway. Hit that pretty solid. So that should be a nice shot. This will be a great test. Now we'll go swing number two. I'm gonna lift that left heel up. Let's see what kind of club head speed we can get on this one. There we go. Just down the left edge of the fairway. So those will be a great test because those will hit fairly similarly. Now swing number one, I got 112.8 miles an hour, not bad. 272 total distance. Not my best drive ever, but definitely not a bad drive. P swing number two, I got 118, so six miles an hour faster, and 292. So you can see, no matter if you're swinging 70 miles an hour, lifting that heel may get you to 78. If I'm swinging 150 miles an hour, it may get me to 158. So it really doesn't matter how fast you're swinging, these same principles help you to get more speed. Let's take it to the next piece, it's gonna make your swing a lot easier. All right, piece number two, how high should I lift my arms? And again, if we don't test this, we don't really know if we're even able to do this. A lot of players will have shoulder problems and a very simple test you can do is stand nice straight up and down, keep your chest facing forward. I don't wanna lean back like this, keep my shirt buttons level with the ground. And I'm gonna take my arms shoulder width apart, put my thumbs up toward the sky. And if there was a wall behind me, 
I'm gonna try to put my thumbs into that wall. Now you can see I can lift my hands fairly high. Some guys could go even behind their back when they're doing that, I'm not that flexible. But if you have a shoulder injury, you may only be able to get to here and your shoulders kind of lock up. Or maybe you'll have one arm that goes way up and the other arm doesn't. Well, if either arm can't get above your shoulders, then you're not gonna be able to have a high back swing. Because if I rotate in the golf swing while I'm doing that, that's as far back as I can go. If I can get about 30, 45 degrees above my shoulders, that is plenty high. I can go as high as I want in the golf swing, no problem at all. So do that test. And if you can't get your arms to elevate above your shoulders, don't worry about swinging high with your arms. It's not gonna be something that you're able to do. One little quick tip, if you do, have, if you do fail that test, you take a tennis ball, don't, don't do a golf ball, it'd be too hard, but take a tennis ball or a lacrosse ball. And what you'll do is you'll lay flat on the ground and you'll rub out, roll that ball on your back that's gonna push into these muscles. It's gonna loosen those up. Josh, that is our is a co-founder of Top Speed Golf, he had the same issue. Couldn't lift his arms above his shoulders. He'd take a tennis ball, a cross ball, roll his back out. You go up and down and kind of loosen up that tissue and the muscle. And he was able to get his arms going from here all the way up well over his head now and could now have his arms higher and picked up a little bit of swing speed doing that. So there is a solution, but it does take a little time and effort. So let's see what, a, what kind of a difference that makes. Again, I'm gonna make two swings. I have my flight scope running. Should be ready to go. All right, swing number one. I'm gonna keep my hands fairly low and not go very far back with my hands. All right, hit a nice solid shot right down the middle. And again, it's not saying that you can't hit good shots taking a shorter swing. It's just saying you're not gonna have as more of a free flowing effortless swing. You're gonna to have to work hard for that distance with a shorter swing. So let's take a look at that one compared to this next swing where I'm gonna go ahead and get those arms going well back higher feeling like my arms move up, like they're kind of going up toward the sky as I'm about back swing. Let's see what happens with the club head speed there. There we go, right down the middle of the fairway. Let's compare those two. So number one, again, I hit that well, but I had to work for my distance there. Let's see what the first one was. So on my lower arm shot, club head speed was 107.1, so I definitely dropped off some club head speed and dead solid, carried it 259, total 267. The second swing, I put out the same amount of effort and energy. I didn't swing any harder when my arms went higher. I actually swung nice and fluid and easy. I went from 107 to 119.3. My carry distance went to 294 and 304 for the total. So in those two swings, I went from, let's see here, 267 to 304. That's a pretty daggone big difference there. We're talking, uh, what would that be, 37 yards or so? So nothing to sneeze at. So do that test. If you can't get your arms high, work on loosening up the muscles in your back so that you can. If you have a shoulder injury, it may not be possible. If you can get your arms high, just feel like those arms come up toward the sky there, make that big free-flowing arc. You're gonna get some easy speed. All right, so the next one is a big one, and we're gonna test our internal and external hip rotation, specifically in this left hip in the golf swing. So when you take your your leg, keep it straight and pull it forward in front of your body here. Now what I'm doing is I'm keeping my pelvis or my hips facing straight ahead. I don't wanna do this when I'm doing that test and move my hips. My hips are staying straight ahead, my belt buckle is staying straight ahead. I just lift my foot into the air and I'm gonna internally rotate my left foot as much as I can and then I'm gonna externally rotate my foot. Now what that's telling me is in the golf swing, if you look at this foot compared to my hips, as I rotate my hips into the follow through, what that foot is doing is it's turning inward in relationship to my hips. So that foot as it's coming on through is rotating in. If I do it from this angle, that foot is rotating in this way. Now you can see how my left hip is going this way, my foot is in. Now that's a big problem if you try to keep your foot still on the ground and I try to finish my swing. So if I keep my foot planted forward and I can barely can rotate through the shot, my hips can't open, now I'm gonna end up doing something like this and cutting off my swing. How many times do you see players that look like they've lost a little bit of range of motion and they end up doing one of these type swings where their hip just folds down and they don't really finish their swing versus you watch everybody on tour and all of a sudden they're getting these long free flowing swings, hips rotate all the way around. So if you fail this test, if your hip can't turn at least 45 degrees inward, you can't have your foot square. You can do one of two things. Everybody on the PJ Tour basically does it this way. 
when they come down, their heel lifts up off the ground, their foot swivels open, and they finish with their foot more open. On average on the PJ Tour, I've measured this, the foot may start square. On average, players end up with their foot 45 to 60 degrees open in the follow through. I don't see anybody, not a single person that I've measured. I've measured almost 100 different players when I'm looking on slow motion footage. Nobody keeps their foot perfectly square like that in the follow through where it doesn't rotate at all. If they do keep their foot facing forward some, you may see somebody like Jordan Spieth that does that. All right, he's trying to not move his foot and he just rolls it. Well, probably not the best thing to do for your ankle. So if you fail the internal rotation test, if you fail this little test we did, what you have to do, and there's really just no way around it, Either open that foot up during the swing, which I find some players struggle to do, or open that foot up about 45 degrees at the start. Let that foot face forward. Now I can rotate all the way to here to where my hip and my foot are lined up straight and just rotate a little bit more to my full finish. That makes it way easier for you to rotate through the shot. So again, let's try that out. I'm gonna keep my feet square. I'm gonna hit this golf ball, and when I finish my swing, my foot is not gonna rotate open at all. This is definitely not how I normally swing, but we're gonna show you how this just kills your distance. Now I hit that dead solid. I, that's about as good as I could ever hit one doing it that way. So if, if that doesn't have good numbers, I'm never gonna get the good numbers because that thing was really nicely hit. My swing speed was 105.6 and my, carry, my total distance was 258. So again, I just hit one 304 I know I have a lot more in the bag. Now let's do it the other way. I'm gonna open up my foot, and as I finish, I'm gonna let my body rotate all the way on around to where my hips and everything are letting the momentum of my body go toward the target. Now if I test this one out again, we know what's gonna happen here, but I'll go ahead and, and swing another one just to, to prove a point. There we go, even on a miss hit, not even as good, a little bit thin on the face, my swing speed went way up. I know I can just hear the sound of the ball coming off the face. And my total distance went up to 284. So even on a miss hit, 30 yards farther. And club head speed went up to 117. So 10 miles an hour or so faster there. So do that test. Again, if you can't rotate your foot in, you can either lift your foot and let it rotate during the swing, or you can start with it rotated open. I find everybody does better, or most players do better if they start with the foot open. Maybe you don't like the way it looks, but you're gonna like the way it feels when you hit the fairway. Now finally, we're gonna test something that I rarely see people test, and that's your rotation from your neck or your, your cervical spine. How much can I rotate to the right and to the left as I'm going through here? So what we'll do, I want you to go ahead, if you can put it, set up against a wall with your shoulders against the wall, keep your shoulders nice and steady and level. Don't move your shoulders around very much. And then I want to keep my chin or head up high, and I'm gonna to rotate to the left as far as I can. Now, if I'm going this way, and I'm gonna rotate down. Let's imagine I'm hitting it towards you. I wanna let my chin get all the way over my shoulder. A lot of times players can only rotate to here. Maybe they have a little bit of stiffness in their neck and they can't rotate on through. Well, what does that matter? In the backswing, in order to be able to see this golf ball and make a big shoulder turn, I have to let my chin come over my shoulder. So you can see how my chin is over my shoulder now. If I can't get that kind of rotation, what's gonna end up happening is my neck locks up here and I'm gonna to have to turn my head away from the ball a little bit, or I'm gonna say, okay, I don't wanna do that, and I'm just gonna shorten up my swing. Either way, I'm killing my distance. So do the test. If for any reason you have trouble rotating your neck to the left, again, do a little therapy, get, get with a physical uh, trainer, uh, physical therapist, work the, loosen up the neck a little bit so you can rotate more easily. But if you can't do that, a little cheat here is that if I let my just my left eye look at the ball, focus in on your head turning, but don't worry if, you're, if your chin turns away a little bit. If you happen to barely lose a little sight of the golf ball, I would rather you do that and make a bigger turn and be able to see it with just my left eye than I would to shorten that turn, make a compact swing and not swing through it. Because you're gonna lose 30 or 40 yards when you do that, that's just what we tested. So make sure you go through that test. If you can't get the full range, do some exercises to get the full range, but then make sure you go ahead and let your head swivel a little bit and just look at the golf ball with your left eye. To prove that, and we've seen great players do this, you know, even look at Jack Nicklaus, he kind of set up that way a little bit with his golf swing. But I want to prove to you that you can hit some great golf shots doing this. 
let's go ahead and make a swing here and I'm gonna let my head pivot a little bit and just look at the, look at the golf ball with my left eye as I go on the backswing. So watch my head on this one and you're gonna see how it rotates a little bit, which is completely fine. And I hit that one right down the middle, one of the best ones. So my head swiveled a little bit. It's not the end of the world. What I, is it the best thing to do? Probably not, but it's better to hit it 30 yards farther and let your head swivel than to go 30 yards shorter and try to keep your head still. So 116, 293 total distance there. So follow those tests. One thing that really kind of drives me nuts is when we're trying to work on our swing, but nobody ever takes the time to test you and see if you can actually perform these motions. Can you rotate your body? Can you lift your arms to get the swing that works best for you? So make sure you go through these tests. And then from there, what we're really getting at here is what we call the power turn in the top speed golf system. That's where we rotate the body. So whether we're lifting the heel, whether we're getting the arms higher, all that is in an effort to rotate better going back and to rotate better coming on through. If you can do that, you get a lot more swing speed. Now I've got a great bonus for you. One of the best power turn videos that I've ever made. It's gonna pop up a preview of that video here in a second. You just click the card that pops up on the screen or the link down below in the description and you're gonna get instant access to that video. Let's go ahead and get started. I can't wait to share with you the power turn from the Top Speed Golf System. Great technique. We can all hit it with really good distance without a lot of muscular effort. And it all starts out, the very first thing you have to do is get a good powerful turn to load up the body. And it's not only in golf, but in all sports we have to rotate the body. At least 90 degrees with the shoulders as you swing to the top. Preferably, we can go even a little bit past 90 to really get loaded up. That's gonna allow us to have a lot of power. So. We don't just have to look at golf for this. Let's actually look at other sports. They're rotating their body, then they're coming forward. So we have to get that load. We have to get this big shoulder turn to be able to create power in the golf swing. So in this series of videos, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. That's one of the first keys to getting power. And we're all gonna get at least a 90 degree turn. If not more than that, I think you'll be surprised at what you can do. So let's go ahead and get started with the next series of videos. And I'm gonna show you how to get this big, powerful turn. All right, guys, so before we go, let's take a look at this in action with some of the top pros. Now, here we're looking at Adam Scott, and you're going to see as he rotates to the top, good full shoulder turn. This is pretty typical of what I see with the top pros, a little past 90. Those guys are working on their flexibility, so sometimes they can get to 100 or even 110 degrees.